This film discusses mature themes about consent and mental illness. Viewer discretion is advised. Please do not show this film to children or video to anyone who is sensitive to this subject matter. Hello there, and welcome to Watch Licks and Chill, a home for cinephiles that is fueled by pop. I'm Boshti, your favorite ever ubiquitous child woman and dedicated host. In honor of our channel's makeover, we're diving into my new favorite, and maybe yours too, psychological thriller meets rom-com meets dark comedy. So if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me. Promising young woman is hard to nail down. It's invasive, but friendly and funny, like making friends in a club bathroom, the pastel color story, mid-century interiors, and grungy modern score have the shape of Sofia Coppola, but it's crisp and vicious, where the other is sun-bleached and apathetic. The mini braids, springtime knits, and all over prints pay homage to Lolita's mini iterations, capturing both society's projection of immaturity onto Cassie, yet mocks the false sense of superiority society would seemingly feel in the presence of immature femmes, very much in the same vein of films like Hard Candy. You know, I wanted to make this it, the, the movie feel kind of like, I think a lot of our lives feel, which is that they're kind of, they are beautiful and they are horrific. And it felt kind of quite true to my, well, mine and all of my friends and lives, I suppose. This film causes major turbulence. Emerald is careful to navigate the subject matter with brutal honesty. Promising young woman doesn't say all men are It's not saying all are murderers, but it underlines time and time again how disposable culture perceives women's bodies. Men. I think they're absolutely, I think, I think they're true. Um, this, you know, it's not a movie, it, there's a reason why everyone in this, nobody comes out of this movie very well, actually. No, no single person, including Cassie. If this is a revenge film at its core, then Cassie is the problematic anti-hero we deserve. She is self-destructive, cavalier with her life for her cause, and both delighted and terrified by her methodology's results. It's hard for anyone in this film to come out with clean hands, Except for Jennifer Coolidge and Clancy Brown, they're kind of perfect. And it shows how when the culture is toxic, even the complicit suffer. It challenges the benefit of the doubt argument that all women should just avoid situations that could be regrettable, insinuating not only the lack of consequences for perpetrators culture, but a sense of complacency and remaining complicit within it. Fennel criticizes our existence in this system, where our sexual habits are expected to be visibly non-existent in order for us to progress or even be taken seriously. Another huge bonus is this film's score. It's artfully intentional and reinforces the world around Cassie, the level sometimes changing, but not in speech. It contextualizes her thoughts, fights to drain out the monotony of her world, and in a way insulates her from time. Here, the lyrics often outperform the dialogue and help us understand as an audience how much she's cut herself off from the rest of the world. We experience absolute glee in the pharmacy as she is serenaded by Ryan to the tune of Stars Are Blind, while simultaneously being love bombed with a montage of Cassie getting a glimpse at a life she could have had, as well as the deeply scarring betrayal of her discovery that Ryan was there the night that Nina's life was destroyed. The tonal vibratos and thundering drums of Pearl's dream and lullaby bathe us in the horror of her regret by letting anyone in. Fennel summarizes these experiences gracefully by revealing that to her, Falling in love kind of feels like a movie montage. It feels like you were kind of high in this sort of pastel candy land. And so for me, it was about what song, if somebody knew every single word to it, would make me fall even more in love with them. The burst of sunshine while brief is a moment that sticks with you long after viewing the film. This movie is about so much that is toxic. And I think even Cassie's gotten to the point where she's now kind of increasingly unable to contain her rage. While the arrangement provides a playful, almost naughty twist on pop songs, there's 
Also an indication of the looming danger Cassie faces as she lets her trauma continue to take over her life. On the best days of your life, your heart's fluttering, you think it's, you know, this is gonna be it, and you go home to someone's apartment and it's beautiful and it's amazing, and suddenly you find out that the door's locked behind you and you just can't get out. You can't write a film like this or make a film like this without rummaging in your own basement. That's sounds. <laughs> And that is it, my little couch potatoes. You have to tell me, what do you think? Is Promising Young Woman a worthy exploration of the dangers of toxic masculinity? Is Cassie an anti-hero? Shall we all collapse under the weight of the patriarchy? <laughs> if you made it this far, I think we're pretty much owed a thumbs up at this point, wouldn't you agree? The link to Rent Promising Young Woman is down below, and if you're playing the long game, the film should be available for streaming sometime in March. You can check out the soundtrack anywhere streaming is available. Want to tell us your opinion in real time? Join our live streams on Sunday here on YouTube. We have watch parties every week with our channel members, so check out our Patreon for details. It has been my absolute pleasure fangirling with you. I am Boshti, and I will see you in the future.